On this planet, there are both cute and ugly animals. Everybody's idea of cute is different, but cute animals normally have large eyes compared to their body, thick fur, and it also doesn't hurt if you're quite chonky. Some animals have all of these traits, and these animals are in the running for the cutest animals on this planet. Although looking at and holding cute animals gives us a hit of dopamine, it doesn't really help the animals in the wild. Planet Earth can often be a very harsh and brutal place, and being cute doesn't really help. Because of this, many cute animals have a dark side, and some can even be quite brutal. I'll be covering just a few of these creatures today, as I'll be going through 5 cute animals that are secretly brutal. And for our first species, we'll be heading to East and Southeastern Australia, as we have the koala. Now although these mammals are sometimes inaccurately called bears, they are of course marsupials. As I've covered in recent videos, their closest living relatives are wombats, and they share many traits with each other. Koalas typically inhabit eucalyptus woodlands, as the leaves of these trees make up the majority of their diet. These leaves aren't very nutritious, and in fact eucalyptus is poisonous to most animals. They have a special organ that helps detoxify the chemicals from the leaves, and they can eat up to a kilogram of these leaves a day. As these leaves are so poor in energy, koalas can often be seen sleeping throughout the day, and are known to sleep as much as 18 hours at a time. In the wild, they have few natural predators, mostly being targeted by dingoes and large owls. Despite this, over recent years, koala numbers have been in decline, with deforestation being a main factor, and also the catastrophic wildfires. Koalas are also facing problems from diseases, as many koalas koalas are known to contract chlamydia. This can cause vicious inflammation of the urinary tract, and in some cases can even cause blindness. If you want to help out the koalas, I've left a little link in the description below, and hopefully their numbers will increase in the future. There's no getting away from the fact that koalas are cute. They look very much like teddy bears, and they are around the same size. They are so cute that even Obama loves them, but they are still very much wild animals. As Australia can sometimes be a very unforgiving place, koalas sometimes need to be very tough. When cornered, they can become very aggressive, and their bites can result in major injuries. The noises they make are also far from being cute, as it sounds like they're made from a much larger aggressive animal. <laughs> In one very famous case, a koala turned out to be more aggressive than a crocodile. This story dates back to 2006, when a group of four people broke into a zoo in Australia. They intended to steal a koala and sell it for drugs, but when they broke in, they found that the koala was too vicious. The group had quite a lot of scratches and lacerations caused by the koala, and eventually they gave up and found that it was easier to steal a four foot long crocodile. Despite this, koalas normally only attack when provoked, so even though they have the capacity to be quite vicious, they are still quite cute. But for our next species, we'll be heading to the waters around the Antarctic, as we have the leopard seal. Now seals in general are quite cute. They are often quite plump and chubby, and their young are some of the cutest things on this planet. The leopard seal, on the other hand, may be slightly more menacing, but is arguably cute in its own way. This may be until they open their mouth, where you can see their strangely large canine teeth. The leopard seal is the second largest seal in the Antarctic, second only to the southern elephant seal. The leopard seal has a few close relatives, but is one of the most unique members of its family. It lives a very active lifestyle, and is a very effective predator near the top of the food chain. It feeds on various cephalopods, sharks, and other pinnipeds, but tends to show a preference for penguins, and can even filter feed on krill using its strangely designed teeth. These seals are such effective killers that they even play with their food, and sometimes let it get away before catching it again. The only creature they fear are killer whales, and they have proven to have a strange relationship with humans. They tend to be very curious around humans, and as they have no fear, they will happily approach them to check them out. So far, the leopard seal doesn't seem to be very cute at all, but in 2006, one leopard seal exhibited some very caring behaviour. A National Geographic photographer called Paul Nicklin was diving in Antarctica to film a leopard seal. For several days, the female leopard seal brought in penguins that were either injured or dead. It's thought that she was doing this to either feed him or teach him how to feed himself. She went off and got a penguin and tried to feed me the penguin, and a live one, and then she realised I couldn't catch that, so she brought me tired penguins penguins, nearly dead penguins, and she brought me dead penguins. At one point I had five dead penguins floating around my head. She started to flip penguins onto my head. She defended me from other leopard seals when they came by. And she would come and sleep by my sailboat at night, and then in the morning when I'd go back out onto, into the Zodiac, she'd be there waiting for us like a big excited puppy dog. We'd drive over to wherever we wanted to photograph her next to icebergs. She'd go off and get a penguin, and we'd do this song and dance. And this went on for four days before she finally realized that I wasn't going to eat a penguin. This shows that leopard seals can be very inquisitive and caring animals, but of course they can also be very dangerous. This was proved earlier in 2003, when a marine biologist working with the British Antarctic Survey drowned after being 
being dragged nearly 60 meters underwater by a leopard seal. It's unknown whether the leopard seal intentionally killed this biologist, or if it was playing and accidentally killed her. So although not everyone would call these seals cute, they are very complex animals. But for our next species, we'll be heading back over to Australia, as we have the grey butcher bird. Now this species is endemic to Australia, and can be found across many different habitats. This bird adapts very well to city life, and can be encountered in the suburbs of many of the large cities in Australia. It has a very characteristic song, which I'm sure many Australians will be familiar with. <laughs> Now this bird may look like many other birds that you could find in your garden, and is quite an inconspicuous city resident. This bird belongs to a group of birds known as the butcher birds, and they don't get this name for being nice. You may notice that they have a hook at the end of their beaks, and this hook is known for being very sharp. They mainly feed on insects and small invertebrates, but they are known to tackle larger prey such as lizards and other smaller birds. Sometimes these prey items are too hard to swallow whole, so they often use their hooked bill and spiky objects to dispatch them. They often impale their prey on spiky plants, or even wire fencing. They can then tear them apart more easily, before swallowing parts of them whole. This is such a brutal practice for such a regular looking bird, and can be quite shocking to witness. These birds can also turn their sharp beaks towards humans, as they are known to dive bomb passers-by when they get too close to their nests. So although they may look like regular garden birds, they are hiding a dark secret. But for our next species, we'll be heading to the grasslands of North America, as we have the prairie dogs. Now there are five species of prairie dogs dog alive today, and they are considered keystone species. Obviously these creatures aren't dogs, and are in fact a species of squirrel. They are normally found in tight-knit family groups, and in these groups they are very good at communicating. Their vocabulary is more advanced than any other animal language that's been decoded, and research has found that their calls can convey incredibly descriptive details. Unfortunately, prairie dogs are a lot rarer than they used to be. Their historical range has shrunk by more than 95%, and there were once hundreds of millions of prairie dogs in North America. Their decline is of course human-related, as we have destroyed most of their natural habitats. This has also had a knock-on effect to other species, as one of their main predators, the black-footed ferret, was once thought to be extinct before eventually making a comeback. Although these little guys may seem very cute, they are hiding a more vicious side. Prairie dogs are herbivores and mainly feed on grasses. However, when it comes to protecting their turf, they are known to eliminate their competition. They have been known to viciously kill ground squirrels, so that they don't encroach on their territory and compete with them for food. This may seem very out of character for these prairie dogs, but just goes to show how competitive life can be. So although they seem very cute, they do have the ability to be ground squirrel killers. But for our next species, we'll be heading back over to Australia, as we have the dingo. Now the dingo is a medium sized canine, and can look almost identical to domesticated dogs. Although these canines are seen as iconic Australian animals, they've been in Australia for a relatively small amount of time. The earliest known dingo fossil found in Australia dates to around 3,450 years ago. It's thought that they could have arrived in Australia around 8,300 years ago, and it's thought that they were brought to Australia by humans, from nearby islands such as Sulawesi and Borneo. Their introduction had a massive effect on the native species, such as the quolls and of course the thylacine. As these dingoes are so similar to domesticated dogs, in some cases they are kept as pets, but are known to be a little on the wild side. But as wild animals they can also be very dangerous, and are also thought to be pests in many areas as they take down livestock. In fact the largest fence in the world was built to keep out dingoes, and it cost 10 million Australian dollars a year to keep it in working condition. Dingo attacks on humans are very rare, but they do sometimes target young children, and they are famous been a few fatalities over the years, so although they may look very much like your dog at home, they are slightly more dangerous. It's not my intention to vilify any of the creatures on this list, as most of them only attack when provoked, and their brutal behaviour is only an adaptation to help them survive. If you know of any other creatures that could be on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye. <laughs>